In tonight's reading, we learn to assess things a little bit more clearly. Welcome back to St. Paul Lutheran Church in Unionville, Michigan on this Friday, the 22nd of December in the year of our Lord, 2023. Glad you can join us as we end our day and our week with God's Word and prayer. As we do, uh, this is now week 51, day 5 of reading through the New Testament in 2023. And that brings us to Revelation 17. There are only five chapters left in the in the New Testament, five chapters left in the book of Revelation, uh, and we are nearing the end. This is very close to the culmination, the the fulfillment of, of that final victory. And, uh, and so even though we're at that stage, even though uh, the point at which John is describing is that close to our Lord's return, uh, still things may not necessarily look like that. So let's turn to our text. Revelation 17. Then one of the seven angels, who had the seven bowls, came and said to me, Come, I will show you the judgment of the great prostitute who is seated on many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed sexual immorality, and with the wine of whose sexual immorality the dwellers on earth have become drunk. And he carried me away in the spirit into a wilderness, and I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast that was full of blasphemous names, and it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immorality. And on her forehead was written a name of mystery, Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and of earth's abominations. And I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints, the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I marveled greatly. But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast with seven heads and ten horns that carries her. The beast that you saw was and is not and is about to rise from the bottomless pit and go to destruction. And the dwellers on earth whose names have not been written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, will marvel to see the beast because it was and is and is to come. This calls for a mind with wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman is seated. They are also seven kings, five of whom have fallen. One is, the other has not yet come. And when he does come, he must remain only a little while. As for the beast that was and is not, it is an eighth, but it belongs to the seven, and it goes to destruction. And the ten horns that you saw are ten kings who have not yet received royal power, but they are to receive authority as kings for one hour, together with the beast. These are of one mind, and they hand over their power and authority to the beast. They will make war on the Lamb, and the Lamb will conquer them, for he is Lord of lords and King of kings, and those with him are called chosen and faithful. And the angel said to me, The waters that you saw where the prostitute is seated are peoples and multitudes and nations, and languages. And the ten horns that you saw, they and the beast, will hate the prostitute. They will make her desolate and naked, and devour her flesh, and burn her up with fire. For God has put it into their hearts to carry out his purpose by being of one mind, and handing over their royal power to the beast, until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman that you saw is the great city that has dominion over the kings of the earth. Thus far, Revelation chapter 17. 
So this is another case where there's a tremendous amount of symbolism to unpack and to dig in, uh, to dig into, and far more than than we would want to take the time here now to dig into. So let's kind of zoom out a little bit, so to speak, focus on the bigger picture. The fact that this power, this woman and the beast and all of the all of the powers that are wrapped up in these images, they look impressive. John himself saw them and marveled. He says, when I saw her, I marveled greatly. But notice what the angel says to him. What are you marveling at? She is about to be destroyed. She and they, all together, are about to be destroyed. And that itself is an important point for us to take to heart. We are surrounded by powers that seem far greater than anything that we are capable of taking on, let alone overcoming. And yet, as, as powerful as the, the powers of this world seem, as powerful as they try to make themselves appear, their end is destruction. When was it? At one point in the, I believe it was in the Psalms, uh, we made note that, or no, it was either Psalms or Proverbs, one of the two. It made the point that the wicked may seem to prosper, but they are always on the cusp of ruin. They are not just one heartbeat, but less than a heartbeat away from losing everything. The righteous, though, God's people who have been made righteous by faith, even when they are completely trampled down and seemingly destroyed, they are on the cusp of victory, on the cusp of being exalted. They are to use Paul's words, more than conquerors, even in the midst, even the worst of their suffering. That is how God functions. We see it played out here, but this is just an example, an extension of what we saw from Jesus on the cross, for example. God, uh, for some reason, he takes great pleasure in bringing victory through what seems like defeat, bringing good through what seems like evil, bringing joy through what seems like sorrow. So as we prepare ourselves for the signs leading up to our Lord's return, Yes, we are warned, cautioned, whatever word you like to use for it. We are cautioned that the, the, the princes of this world, the powers of this world, will rage, will do their worst, will make themselves look invincible. But in reality, they are on the cusp of defeat, of having everything taken from them, and the spiritual reality will be revealed as God's people inherit his kingdom. Let's close with Luther's evening prayer. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have been wrong, where I have done wrong, and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body and soul and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. All right, as always, thank you for joining us as we end our day and our week with God's word and prayer. Uh, 
God willing, we will see you a couple times this weekend. For, of course, Sunday morning for our regular worship. No Bible study on Sunday, though, because Sunday, of course, is Christmas Eve day. So we'll see you Sunday morning. God willing, we'll see you Sunday evening at 7 p.m. for our candlelight service of carols and readings. And then Monday morning at 9 a.m. for our Christmas Day worship. So, a lot of opportunities to see one another, both uh, either here in person or streaming here online. But in either case, God's blessings on your night and your weekend. And if we don't see you in person, Merry Christmas. <laughs>